Moments after a tank punches a hole in the back of this Wells Fargo bank in Cobb County, SWAT team members rush inside. Their goal? Free two female employees being held hostage and find the man who identified himself as a military veteran armed with a bomb. That's part of a 2017 report from our NBC affiliate in Atlanta after military veteran Brian Brown Easley walked into a bank and presented a note saying he was carrying a bomb. The real life drama that followed now is the focus of a new movie titled Breaking, which hits theaters today. In it, we learn Brown Easley had no intention of robbing that bank. Wait, 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 it's all up and cold. It's a way. Brian. What do I need to do to get the attention that I need right now? Right now! Right now, ma'am! Brian. Brian, calm down. Calm down. Is this what I need to do? No, we're gonna... We're gonna take care this of this. what I need to do, okay? Okay. Is this what you need? Is this all the motivation you need to get me what I need? You have hostages in here, ma'am. Hostages and they scared. Brian. They scared for their damn lives. Brian. I need a phone call. Brian. You have my undivided attention. I don't need your undivided attention. I need the attention of the VA. Mm. Joining us now, the director and co-writer of Breaking, Abby Damaris Corbin. Abby, thanks so much for being here today. First of all, my goodness, just a window into the performance there by John Boyega. But um, for our viewers who aren't familiar with the story that played out five years ago, take us through a little bit of who he is, who this man is, what he was going through, and what happened that day. Sure. Well, first off... Wow, watching that clip over again, you can yeah. just feel the chills run down your back. John really jumped into the role of Brian Brown Easley. We met with Brian's wife and came to know him. He was a gentleman, a man who loved people, loved his country, and it took a lot for him to break, for him to become a walking bomb, to go into that bank it, it took a lot. So we wanted to know why. And what John and I did together was really step into his shoes. Yeah, and Abby, he, we should say that he never had a bomb in his backpack. It was an idle threat he was making at the bank. The SWAT team went in. Eventually, they didn't know that it was an idle threat, and they shot and killed him. Um, so why was he there, if not to rob the bank? This is a man who wanted to be heard. Like my dad, he was a veteran. And he'd had a really hard time acclimating back into civilian life. And he was there to get his disability payment. Abby, that really Abby this is a story about an actual human being. This is mm -hmm. a story about a Marine Corps veteran who they extracted $892 from his disability check. And that's why he was in the bank to make it people aware of what happens to veterans. And he certainly did that. But my question to you is, given the state of the movie industry today, this is not a remake. This is a story, again, of an actual human being, of what happened to him. This is not a DC comic film with characters uh, and monsters and things like that. Talk, if you could, about the degree of difficulty that you had, or maybe you didn't, in bringing this story about a, a citizen of the United States of America to the screen. How much did it cost? How much trouble did you go through in terms of getting it to the big screen? Because this is a, this is a tough thing to do this day and age in the movie business. How did you do it? <laughs> it's massively difficult to get this film made. I had a lot of superheroes that helped me make this happen. John Boyega, straight up. This man used his voice to make sure that this film was made. He read Brian Brown Easley's story and said, it matters that this story is told. Michael K. Williams, the late, great Michael K. Williams, he read the script and had a, a, an immediate personal connection to the story and said, how can I use my voice to make sure that Brian's is heard? I had an incredible financier that said, we want this story be told. But I got to tell you, that line was not long. There was one financier who stood up 
and said, we want this story to be heard. Well, we're so glad they did, Abby. If you, Brian, as you mentioned, was looking for his $892 check from the VA to be reinstated. He said he'd be out on the streets without it. Um, he wanted to, in that bank that day where he died, he wanted to bring attention to issues surrounding veterans of homelessness, of mental health, of flaws at the VA as he saw them. So as you dove into this story, what did you learn about the plight of our military veterans and what should our audience know? Well, like Brian, I've stood in those lines. My dad's a Navy veteran, and those lines are very long. And I learned that <laughs> through Brian's story, I I've had a lot more empathy for what it means to acclimate back into civilian life, even though I lived through that with my dad. I'd seen him go from being uh, an athlete to being in a wheelchair. And I learned that the thing that breaks through, the thing that really matters is how we help one another because systems are mm. broken and the way to repair them is by individual responsibility. See the person who's right in front of you, make a change mm. where you are. And that's why we're here. It's a powerful real life story, incredibly well acted as you saw in that clip and breaking is in theaters beginning today. The film's director and co-writer, Abby Damaris Corbin. Abby, thanks for being here. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you. We will be